Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparable great power for us who believe that the power is the same as the mighty strength. He exacted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Father, we thank you and we bless your name this morning. We exalt you and we magnify you, God. We lift your name on high, for there is none like you, King of kings. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be lifted. You are worthy to receive all honor, all glory, and all the adoration, my Father. Lord, this morning I decrease that you may increase, my Father. Lord, this morning may you manifest yourself in this meeting, O God. Lord, this morning, may you speak a rema word to anyone who is in this place, my Father. Lord, I pray that you may minister to us, O God, in a new and fresh manner, my Father. We desire, Lord Jesus, it is our prayer this day, that, Lord, you may mold us, you may fix us, O God. Every broken piece within us, my Father, may you bring it back together, that, Lord Jesus, we may be like you, my Father. We may resemble you on this earth, my God. That is our prayer this morning, that you're going to minister unto our, unto our hearts this day, my Father. Let every heart that has come with a burden, my Father, may their burden be lifted this morning, my God. Let that person that has come with sickness, my Father, may they be healed, O oh God, my Father. Let that person that has come with lack, my God, may they go back provided for my Father. Let that person that has come trusting you, O oh God, for one thing or another, my Father, as they open their mouth to pray 
unto you, my God. Even those who lack words to me, to pray unto you this morning. Father, this morning you know the desires of our hearts. Open the eyes of our hearts, my God, that we may see you, that we may know you, my God. The God who died for our sake, oh God, that we may no longer live in sin, my God. That we may no longer live in as slaves, my God. That we may no longer live, my God, Jehovah, in ways that does not please you, my Father. For you gave us power and authority, my God, to trample over serpents and scorpions, my Father. This morning we surrender to your word. This morning we surrender to your will. Minister to us this day, my God. Minister to our, our souls this day, my God. May we, Lord Jesus, not remain the same. May you grant us beautiful ashes oh God. May you grant us the oil of joy for every sorrow, my Father. We thank you and we bless your name. This morning be lifted and be exalted for you are God and there is none like you. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can have your seat. Praise the Lord. How are you this morning? Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Are you blessed to be here to this morning? I am also blessed. I'm Cindy Ocheng. I'm born again. I love Christ. He's my sustainer. He's my redeemer. He's my strength. He's my fortress. He's the rock in whom I stand. Without him, I have nothing I can offer. Without him, I cannot move. Without him, I cannot live. I exist in him. When you pluck me out, it's done for me. Because in the beginning, he's the one who was there and he created me. And that is same to you. You were plucked from God. So we have every reason to thank God. We have every reason to be grateful this morning because we are here today. Because we can breathe because we can hear God's word today. We have every reason to thank God. I'm so grateful. I don't know if you feel like there are many reasons not to, but today I give you a reason to thank God. He is God. And before he formed you, he knew you. And he set you apart for this generation, for such a time as this. He set us apart for the glory and honor of his name. So today's reading we have read from Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. To 23, and also we did Second Samuel, if I'm not wrong. Second Samuel, verse 23. So I'll begin with uh, Ephesians. It says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith, Paul was talking to the Ephesus about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all. God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. I keep asking that the God of your, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. So today, I want to speak on uh, a topic, being loose to become what the Lord has originally intended for us. Being loose, set free to become what the Lord has originally, had originally intended for us. And now when you see this prayer that Paul is praying, he says that I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. So that is my starting point. Like we cannot have this part of wisdom and revelation unless we realize that we have been loose to become what the Lord has intended, had originally intended for us. Our first reading we see it is a song of David. And David, so to read for your verse, David here, he, here is his last words. David's last words. These are the last words of David. The inspired utterances of David, son of Jesse. Son of Jesse. It is uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. 
So these are the last words of David, that the inspired utterances of David, son of Jesse, the utterances of the man exalted by the Most High, the man anointed by God of Jacob, the hero of Israel's song. The spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, when one rules over people in righteousness, when he rules in the fear of God, he is like the light of morning at sunrise, on the cloudless morning, like the brightness after rain, that brings grace from the grass, from the earth. If my house were not right with God, surely he would not have made with me an everlasting covenant, arranged and secured in every part. Surely he will not bring to fruition my salvation and grant me every, da every desire. So when you see this verse, you see David is saying that it is being said that the man anointed by God of Jacob, the hero of Israel, sorry, the man exalted by the Most High. And uh, most of us know about the story of David, if not all of us. And uh, the story of David, we can see that he was anointed as a king when he was, uh, he was still young. And uh, we see his journey after killing Goliath and everything and everything. So David was made king. Sidio. So David has a very funny journey. And uh, I love David. Naitwanga sister David. So because I will tell you why I love David at the end of the day. So and uh, he, he did all manner of evil that could have been done. Praise the Lord. He committed adultery. He killed. He did all those evil. And uh, we can see the story. You can read the entire Second Samuel Utawana two story. David Bilenenda Dinenda Baka Akikuja Kukufa in the Book of Kings. And uh, David did all that. He went and killed Uriah, and uh, he slept with the Uriah's wife, and all that, and all that. But the, when you see. So it begins with, at verse seven, in chapter 7, we see God's promise to David. And he says that he will establish an everlasting kingdom with David and everything and everything. Sindio, the Lord declared that, declares to you that he himself will establish a house for you. That one is in chapter 7. God now speaks to David and gives him his promise that I will establish an everlasting kingdom. I will be with you wherever you go and all that and all that. And that is in chapter 7. So as you move on to 2 Samuel chapter chapter 11, this is where David now falls. Initially, God had already blessed him, and he knew that you will be the king over Israel and everything and everything. He was blessed. That thing is, was within him. But when we come to chapter 11, we see David sinning, and this sin is committing adultery. And after committing adultery, he also kills Uriah. And now, after killing Uriah, when uh, he realized, now pro in, in God sent a prophet known as Nathaniel, and Nathaniel came to David, and he told him about what he had done, and it had not pleased the Lord. And after that, God sent punishment on David, and he told him that everyone in your household will, will die by by the sword. Your sons will die by the sword. And when uh, David saw this, and also the child that you have bore with Uriah's wife will die. And when David heard this, he moaned so much. And uh, he moaned. But now, already the consequences of sin had already come upon him. But remember, God kuna promise. Alikuwa shampe, alikuwa shampe. So, he had to live with the consequences of this sin. He was told that the son that you have born with Uriah's wife have to die. And David mourned and fasted and prayed so that the child could come back to life. But the child did not come back to life. He was killed because the Lord said that you, he will kill him. And uh, God cannot go against his word. God cannot go against his word. And after he was killed, David had to wash himself. Okay, after the child died, David had to wash himself back and eat and drink and uh, come back to life because 
that is now one thing why I love David. He knew how to get up after every fall. He knew how to get up and rise up again. And because he could not go against God, God's word, God said, because you have sinned, I will punish you this way and this way. And because he knew this is God, he could not bargain. He said, okay, the child have died. And now what next? I will just have to accept because it is the Lord that has spoken. One thing about David, he had understanding. He had wisdom. He knew if God says, he will fulfill it. And that is the God that we serve. And at the end of the day, even after, after sinning and doing all this, David went and repented. In uh, chapter 12, verse 13, in a, in second Samuel, in a same, then David said to Nathan, Nathan, sorry, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. Praise the Lord. The power of repentance, the power of repentance. He knew that, yes, I have sinned against the Lord. Yes, the Lord has instilled this punishment on me. But he knew and said, God, I have sinned against you. And the Lord will never neglect the sacrifice of a broken spirit and a concrete heart. The Lord will never neglect that. Praise the Lord. And let me surprise you. Ahab, Ahab well, that is another instant of God forgiving someone who had done wrong. Ahab, alikuwa anawa the prophets of God. He used to destroy the kingdoms of God. Alikuwa na destroy. And Mbaka, to the extent that the wife, Jezebel, was the, yani alikuwa mkubwa watu, yani, they were just against God's house. But su surprisingly, when you read First Kings, I think First Kings 21, it says that Ahab, what a nini so many of Musiseme ni wongo. Eh? Musiseme ni wongo. Unana First Kings 21, from verse 25, kuko mbele, inasema, from verse 25, there was never anyone like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. Yani ya li jituma. Unana vile uneza jituma kunini yo hassle li you come through. Ali jituma kutesa watu wa mungu. So, Mm, evil of, in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel, his wife. Yani, walikuwa my partner. Unwana like the wife, you are told you will be a helper. Ya alikubali, I will be a helper to destroy God's kingdom. Yani alikubali. So, hata sisi young people, I know I'm not married, but <laughs> even the man that we will marry, oh, we will marry us, or we will marry, whatever the case, akiwa muizi, unatu utakua helper wake, so choose wisely. Sindio, eh, kama ni muizi, you have to be a helper. When I'm going to be a leo, So, because you talk, <laughs> you have to be a helper. So, let us choose wisely vile bada tujavuka. Sindio? So that tujue tuna help nini. Tusikwe tuna help muizi. Sindio? Yes. So, uh -huh. he behaved in the vilest manner by, the go by going after idols like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. When Ahab heard this word, he tore his clothes. Okay, Mungu alikuwa mesema tampanish. He tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and fasted. Hmm? Fasted. Uni hahab mwenye alikuwa amesell himself to punishing people. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring disaster. I will not bring this disaster in his day. But I will bring it in the house in the days of his son. So, okay, the first part, I'm interested now, Sana. I will not bring this disaster in his day because he just decided to humble himself and pray. He was the worst that could have been said in those days. But he knew if I humble myself, God cannot neglect that contrite spirit and a humble heart. Praise the Lord. So that is the secret. David knew, yes, I have sinned. But the moment I will accept I have sinned and go to the Lord, he will pardon me. Yes, there are consequences of sin. There will be consequences. Because it came to the sons. There are consequences of sin. But the devil will always want you to live in those, in those consequences so that you may never experience the breakthrough of God. Praise the Lord. The devil will always want you to be reminded that you did this, you did that, you did this. And because you did that, that is why your sons are dying. 
That is why your sons will be killed by the sword. But David knew, yes, I have done this. Yes, I've been, there is a punishment. There are consequences that are there. They are following me because I did this. Because no sin goes unrewarded, by the way. Yes, we say that our God is merciful. But we have to pay for everything that we do. That is so, so true. He will forgive us. But there are consequences that we have to pay for. I heard another preacher, Alkwana Sema. Before he began preaching, he was a drunkard. And he used to drink. Nakuimba, nakuimba, nini, 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 huko kama disco what? And after that, he became, he got a calling from God. And he now pastors a church. But he said that for almost five plus years, he struggled with praise and worship. Why, and, he, and as he was praying, he was revealed that you are now paying for what you are doing. He struggled. He struggled with praise and worship. He paid for what he did. But God still remembered him. Praise the Lord. So, as we say that grace will abound, remember, every sin has a consequence. As we sit every day, yes, grace will abound. We will go to God. But at the end of the day, there are consequences. There is there's somewhere that you will pay. And you will know when you are paying. Praise the Lord. But when you still know that God is still loving, God is still patient with you, God is still caring, God is still a God who endures you. Yani, aezi kukuacha. Praise the Lord. Yes, you are sinner. And that is why originally God created us to be fruitful and multiply and enjoy the good of the land. But because sin came, and sin had to be punished by death. And uh, God cannot go against his word. And because his original intention was that we may live forever and ever. That is why he had to provide an option of giving us his son, Jesus Christ. That was his original intention. His original intention that was we live and be fruitful and multiply. But because we sinned, now there was consequences to our sin. And the consequence was death. But because there is still an original plan, God had to figure out, how can I redeem these people back? How can I bring them back? How can I set them loose again so that they become what I originally intended for them? So after all that, God now gave us his son, Jesus Christ, so that we may be redeemed back to him, so that the original plan of God will still remain. The original plan of God does not go. If God called you to do this, you will do it. The problem is, we will stay in the wilderness because of our sins and everything we have done. Because we have to pay for them. Sawa, sawa. So, but the original plan of God, if God said, you, I have made you to be a prophet. You, I have made you to be a businessman. You, I have made you to be this. That plan sticks with God. It sticks with God. And how long we take is, is uh, dependent on how we live on this earth. But the plan has to come to pass. And now because the devil knows that God has planned this and this for our lives, he will come and try to delay that thing. He will come and try to make you sit down, relax, udani too. Because I've sinned, God is in the accept tena. God cannot accept me back. Because I've done this and this, and consequences begin to reveal themselves to your life. Now God has forsaken you. No, the Bible records so well, He will never leave you nor forsake you. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Bible was not wrong to write that. There is a valley of the shadow of death. But as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. I'll be your comforter. I'll be your strength. When your heart is overwhelmed, be led to the rock that is higher than you. And that rock is where we were plucked from. And that rock is God. Praise the Lord. We are human, yes. We are bound to sin. We were born in sin. But don't let that be in your mind such that you cannot realize when the Lord wants to lift you up from the pit. 
Don't let the consequences. Yes, maybe you did it knowingly. Yes, you did it unknowingly. But don't let the consequences keep you down there. Because the Lord is calling you back. The Lord is calling us back. The Lord is telling us back. I still knew you before I formed you. And I set you apart for this and this purpose. And now you delaying there in the consequences is making your journey long. And the moment your journey is long, that is when you start feeling like uh, God can never accept me back. But the Lord is so faithful to his word. And none of, of his word must, uh, will, will ever go without being fulfilled. It is us who allow another voice to come into our mind. And this voice will always tell us, you are not enough. You did this and this. You did this and this. You see you are sick. You are sick because you did that one. You see you don't have a job. You don't have a job because you did this and this. But if we remember that God wishes us good, he has good plans for us, plans to make us prosper, plans us to give us a future and a hope. When we remember that word, we will run back to the altar. We will be broken in our spirit. We will come and say, yes, the Lord, I have sinned against you. But your word says that a broken heart and a concrete spirit, Lord, you will not despise. Praise the Lord. The Lord will never despise. If Ahab, niliona yo text ya Ahab last week Sunday, nikasema basi hakuna kenye God aezi forgive. I had never seen that text. I saw it Sunday and I said, wow. I have repented and God had. So what is that mountain that is before you that the Lord cannot level it? What is that thing that is, it is preventing you from receiving your breakthrough? It is nothing to the Lord. He is able to level it down so that you may walk into your destiny. Because if David did not realize this after sinning like this, his end at Ungeona. At the end of the day, David is recorded as a man after my own heart. Wow. He was a killer, but God is a man after my own heart. He committed adultery, a man after my own heart. What was the secret? He understood. The dear Ephesians to Mesoma that the Lord may give you the spirit of wisdom. And understanding that you may know that God wishes me well and not harm. When I am in sin, the Lord does, is not pleased with me in that sin. He is still calling me, come my daughter, come my son, come, I have good plans for you. Plans to give you a future, plans to give you a hope. In the beginning when you were being conceived in your mother's womb, I knew what you would become. It is the devil that is trying to put you down. It is the devil that is trying to lengthen your days of trouble. But God wishes that we may reach our destiny as soon as possible. But the enemy is always there, mark timing. Watch out to pay. Watch our back apple. But the Lord is still telling you today, don't mark time in that consequences of sin. Don't mark time there where the enemy is trying to lift his voice. Don't mark time there. The Lord is calling us today. If only you realize that God wishes us well, you will never sit in sin. You will never sit anywhere that the enemy is trying to suppress you. Anakuambia uwezi fanya hivyo. Unaata family enyu nyi wote ni walevi. You cannot get out of that. Why are you trying? Keep pushing. Keep pushing. The more you push, the more God comes. The more you push, the more he reveals himself. Because you can your Ephesians may to be like that the, the, the nini may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. You will not know him better if you don't seek to understand him, if you don't seek to know him daily, if you do not seek to knock. The Lord says that knock and the door shall be open. If you stand at the door, no one will knock for you. It is you to go and knock. Even if, if you come to our house today, and you stand at the door. Me, I will not know you are there. I will not know. I will not know. The door is there, but I will not know you are there. Yes, God is there. Anajua. Lakini anangoja tu. Knock, knock. And then he tells you, come in. And once you come in, that is when now you will see his fullness of his glory.
that he has for us. So David knew this and he prayed. And you see, after you imagine after that instance, he went to war and he had victory. Praise the Lord. He went to war na kashinda. Why? He did not sit condemned. When we remember about that woman, that adulterous woman, when everyone was there, like atakwa na guvu, he knew he, she knew she had been caught in sin. Hakuenda kujitetea. Alienda tu akata ataki akangoja tu wacha wani chape na mawe. Let me just die. But because Jesus sees that heart, she's nini, she's remorseful. She has humbled. What did Jesus say? He told all the other people, if any one of you has never sinned, let them cast the stone. They began to leave and they left. And Jesus told the woman, lift up your head. The, the Lord wants us today to lift our heads up. He told he, her, lift up your head. Do you see anyone around you? Where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? Where are your accusers? And the woman said, they are nowhere. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Stand up, go your way and see no more. Praise the Lord. The Lord is only calling us to be contrite in spirit, contrite in spirit and humble enough to realize that, Lord, yes, I'm far gone from your way. But you say that your ways are not my ways. Men may see me as bad, but you see me as your precious possession. Hmm? You see me as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That is how you see me. But people are seeing you differently. But when you come to the altar of the Lord and you just surrender yourself to the Lord, it will be a sweet experience for you. Because you will remember no more your sorrows. Your sorrows, you will remember them no more. Because the Lord will come in his fullness, in his glory, in his power. And he will drive out every fear within you, every doubt within you. And you will walk in power. You will walk in the place of your authority. And after all this, we see everything that David did. He was, he, every battle he fought, he won. Every battle he fought, he won. And at the end of the day, we are told that he rested. Praise the Lord. In First Kings, I don't know, it's chapter 2 or something. He, in any, we are told, yes, chapter 2. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned for 40 years over Israel, 7 years in Hebron, and 33 in Jerusalem. So Solomon, Solomon was David's son, sat on the throne of his father David. And his rule was firmly established. So when you see this, we go back to the original promise, plan of God. Praise the Lord. The original plan of God. God told David, I will be with you. I will give you victory over every battle. Ukisoma is a chapter, you will see every battle he went. He was given victory. And also another promise was, I will establish my kingdom in your household. There will always be someone sitting at the throne from your household. When David died, we see that Solomon sat on his throne, on the throne of his father, and he ruled, his rule was firmly established, like it cannot be shaken, it was established. As you go on, after Solomon, we see Rehoboam, what? Something. <laughs> After Solomon, the son of Solomon sat at the seat. You see, what was the original plan of God in a continuous? So, God's original plan will never fail. The thing that keeps us from God's original plan is when the enemy starts to whisper into our ears. Ushatoka. You are, you are far gone from the way. You have already missed the mark. You have already missed the way. So you just continue living where you are. 
Because forget about that dream. Forget about that place that you're going. Forget about where you are headed to. Because you are far gone. You are far gone. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing else you can do to redeem yourself. But David knew the secret. He knew what he, Lord, the Lord had spoken to him. And that is why this prayer is so important. I keep in Ephesians, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. When you know him better, no one will come to know God for you. When you know him better, you will know that this God I serve, today I've lacked, tomorrow he will provide. When you know God better, today I'm sick, tomorrow I'll be healed. When you know God better, today I have been suppressed with sin and everything. I have been in this addiction for so long. But if you know this God, you will know that he was sent for my sake. Ali tuma juya mimi juya hii addiction yangu. Praise the Lord. He was sent because of this sin that easily entangles in my life. He was sent for this thorn in my flesh. When you know him better, you will know that yes, I have done this again. I do not want to do it. Whatever I want to do, I don't do. Whatever I sh should not do, it is what I keep doing. But God is reminding us that you may have this spirit of wisdom and revelation, that you may know him better, that even that thing that is so much into you, that thing that is so much making you like, uki, 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 rudy back, when I feel like I cannot go to God's presence, come as you are. Though your burden are as heavy as they are, the Lord is able to give you a lighter burden because he is God. Sawa, sawa. Then I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. The eyes of your, our hearts have eyes. eyes eh? That our eyes of our heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. He's still reminding us the hope. Like Isaiah Zifunguke. You know, when our heart is far much, imeenda kabisa, our eyes are closed. The eyes of our heart are closed. Imefungwa kabisa. Unona vile ukiwa, kumuna watu wako heartbroken hapo? Wame heartbreakiwa? Wame usha wai heartbreakiwa or somewhere? Kuna venye ka heart kana kwa kaka heavy. Ama nyinyi wote mumekua kwa successful relationships. Afadhali nyinyi. So, like, kuna kwanga naka, yani una feeling physically, eh? Iyo kahat, yani imefungwa, unawana. But he's telling us that I pray that the eyes of our heart may be, may be enlightened. Because the moment our heart is, imefungwa kabisa, like our, the eyes of our heart are closed, we do not see anything that is good. We do not wish to go back. You see? God's original plan ilikuwa that we may marry and everything and everything. But the moment you have been heartbroken, you do not feel like you want anyone else. You feel like the same person. The people are the same. Eh? Wanzo kusema masuji all men are lions. Eh? Wanzo masuji all men are what? Eh? Siju ladies. Eh? We are ladies. We are women. Eh? So because our hearts are locked, imefungwa hivi. But the Lord is saying that, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Why? Because the moment we are enlightened, there's something we are missing. We are missing in order that you may know that the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So the moment our hearts are like this, we forget about the hope, we forget about the riches that are in his glorious inheritance, we forget that we are holy people. The moment our hearts are locked like this, we, we forget that una hope to lipewa. To establish me. Because my heart is like this. We forget that these riches that I need to go for of his glorious inheritance. We forget that he called us to be holy because he is holy. We forget all that. But it is my prayer that today for every hardened heart that the Lord will open the eyes of our heart that we will see the riches that are in his glorious temple that we will see the hope that he will restore hope back to us 
for that burdened heart, we will receive hope once again. We will see the light once again. We will see the riches once again. We will still see ourselves as God's holy people. The God we serve will be able to look at us and say, surely she is after my own heart. Surely he is after my own heart. And also, and his yani, all this is as a, as a result of our heart. When our hearts are opened, we continue. And his incomparable great power for us who believe. So we will see the power that operates it in us. And this power is the same as the mighty strength he exacted when he raised Christ from the dead. And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. And you, do you know how are we partaking of this? When you see Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 1.13 in Asema, and you also, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. Today we have heard the message of truth that God still loves us as long as we go back to him with a remorseful heart. That is the word we have received today. So because we have received that word, and me also, I am included in Christ, when I have that message, the gospel of salvation, when you believed you were marked. Do you remember the children of Israel when their houses were marked by the blood? When you are marked, there is no angel of death that will come to your household. When you are marked, no nothing will come to you. When you are marked, no arrows of the evil one will come to you. When you are marked, God has set you apart. And we should desire that the Lord will mark us. Believe, for those who you believe, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance, the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. So we also share in what Christ, when he was set high above, we were also set high above. When he was uh, told that everything has been placed under his feet, or also us, things have been placed under our feet. When he was appointed head, we have been appointed head. Because we share in the same thing that Christ did. We were included in Christ when we had the message. And we were marked, praise the Lord. We were marked, like we are marked, really to, like picture the way they, People of Israel marked their doors with blood. They smeared them. And when the angel of death came, akaona, hapa kuna mark, akapita. Hapa akuna, akaingia. Hapa iko, akapita. So, every time that you are marked, you are walking in the fullness of God's grace. When you are marked by God, you are walking in his fullness. You are walking in his, in his, in, in his presence. You are walking in everything that he has for you. He's guaranteed that you will get it. So the enemy will always try to ensure that we forget about this hope. We forget about the original plan of God. We forget about what God made for us when we were born, when we were born in our mother's womb. He will always try to make us forget about this. But today the Lord has come to lose us and set us apart that we may become that which God had originally planned for us. Because his words are true, and none of his words fall on the ground without being accomplished. When he says you're blessed, you are blessed. Even when you feel like apokatikati, there are some things that are not going on well. Still remember the original plan. Open your heart, the eyes of your heart. Always make this prayer. God, give me the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Revelation that I may know you. Open the eyes of my heart so that when the eyes of your heart are opened, you will remember the hope that he has called you. 
You will remember the power that he has installed in you. You will remember the authority that you have in Christ Jesus because he is God. And as we conclude, I want us to make the, to go to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. So in Psalm 51, after David had uh, committed adultery and killed Uriah's wife, and he said that, Lord, I have sinned against you. This is David's prayer that he made. Psalm 51. And I pray that we may also have the same confession today. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. It doesn't matter how far you have marked time in those consequences. Because always sin must have consequences. But the good news is God still loves us as we are. And he still makes sure that our plans and in his plans for us will come to pass. This is the prayer that he made. Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Our sins and transgression are always before us. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in, my, in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with high soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. You see, there is a crushing that happened. But let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And at the end of the day, then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I will bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offering. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous in burnt offering, offered whole. Then the bulls will be offered on your altar. Praise the Lord. When David made this prayer, the ultimate goal was, then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. And God had that prayer. So once we are born again, it is not for us only. It is also that we may go back to those that have not come to know Christ, that also them they may enjoy in the freedom that we have received. So that even them, they may be marked timing in the consequences of their sin. They may be marked timing. They even don't know that God had an original plan for them. So when you know the truth, go to another one. Tell them the truth. That person will go to another one and tell them the truth. Because who the son has set free, he has been set free indeed. And when you are set free, believe that you have been set free. Have that confidence of David. That he has been set free. Ukiangalia ki yeya ki oba. Wacha ni mwonyesha. Like he had confidence that I have been set free. He had confidence that the Lord had set him free. So when the Lord sets you free, don't live in condemnation. For there is no more condemnation. 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we are set free, we are set free indeed. Let us walk in confidence that the Lord has set us free. Sawa sawa. Sawa sawa. Unawana ta prayer, yo, nini verse, nini toje, first reading. Inasema, if my house were not right with God, surely he would not have made with me an everlasting covenant. Yani, he came to a place, maka nasema, my house is right with God. Above everything else he did, he still had confidence because he knew the Lord has taken away my reproach. The Lord has taken away, away everything that I did. And now I am right with God. So if my house were not right with God, surely he will not have made me an everlasting covenant, arranged and secured in every yani secured in every part. Surely he will not bring to fruition my salvation and grant me my every desire. So the Lord will still grant you your every desire. The Lord will still grant you everything as long as you don't live condemned. And once you know the truth, speak the truth and this truth will set another person free. And the truth will set us free. And the truth that you're living and dining with God will set you free. You will be free when you do not condemn yourself. But the moment you will feel like, uh -uh, I think there's some portion of me that has not been forgiven. No, the Lord forgives. And when he forgives, he forgives in full. And he gave his ultimate sacrifice, the son Jesus Christ, that we may no longer live in condemnation, that we may no longer mark time in our consequences but the lord may pick us up from every consequences the lord may pick us up from everything that easily entangles every sin that easily entangles Let, yet it is, it is good and pleasing to the eye but when we have god we have everything we will be able to say no where we need to say no we'll be able to say yes where we need to say yes and we will be able to walk and in the light of Christ. And we'll be able to remember when God called me, this is the hope he gave me. Stick to the hope. Stick to the vision. Stick to it. Yes, today it is not good, but what did the Lord say? The Lord said this and this. Let us always remember the hope to which the Lord has called us. We have been loose to become what God originally intended for our lives. So as we reflect on this verse that you have read last time, Psalms, let us just bow our head and pray that the Lord will create in us a clean heart and revive in us everything that was dead in our lives. Everything that we did that made us to live in consequences of our ignorance. The Lord is able to drive us away from all that pit. He's able to lift us up from the miry clay. He's able to set us apart once again. He's able to make his word come to pass. He's able to still put that hope in us that the Lord may fulfill his word in our lives. Pray that God may create in you a pure heart. He may renew a steadfast spirit within you. He may not cast us from his presence or take his Holy Spirit from us. He may restore to us the joy of our salvation. And grant us a willing spirit to sustain us. And if you're there, you have not given your life to Christ, and you would love to give your life to Christ also, surrender it to God. God comes for you and me. And it will be so wrong if we will not accept this call that is calling to us, that I came for you. I came for my own, and my own did not receive me. The enemy is still making us mark time in our consequences. He's still making us see as if we are so much gone that we cannot be taken back to the cross. We cannot be taken back to his glory. But God is faithful. God is just. God is faithful. God is able to hear you from wherever you are. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We honor you this morning. We thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your word today. Thank you because, Lord, you're reminding us that today you're setting us loose, that, Lord, we may walk in your original plan for our lives, O oh God. I pray that, Lord, you may remind us the hope that is in your glorious temple, O oh God, the hope that you placed in us when we were formed in our mother's womb. Help us, Lord, to remember you, God, in our days, my Father. 
I pray that Lord Jehovah, we shall always be broken before you. We shall have a contrite spirit that which you do not despise, my God. Help us to walk in your ways of righteousness, O oh God. Help us to walk in your faithfulness, my God. Help us, Lord, that we may never sleep nor slumber, O oh God, Jehovah, in our walk. That we may always be watchful in our ways, O oh God, King of glory. I pray that, Lord, just as watchmen watch around the walls, O oh God, Lord, may you watch over us, my Father, King of glory. I pray, God, that this day, O oh God, this message of truth, we shall walk with it. We shall run with it wherever we go. We shall not live in condemnation. We shall not live, O oh God, King of glory, in the consequences of our sin. But we shall rise up, O oh God, and fight for what belongs to us. We shall rise up and go back to the first place where we first saw you, my God. We shall rise up and go back to our battle, my God, where we first saw you, God, King of glory. And Lord, we shall realign us. You shall realign us to our purpose, my God, King of glory. We thank you for your word today, God. May each Jehovah bear fruit in our lives, O oh God, and may it be a blessing to us, to our families, to our friends, and everyone connected to us, my God. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.